destiny is calling. Even now. Many of you listening to me have been beautifully equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. But I want to give you a new word for change, and that word is evolution. And you are either going to evolve or expire. See, everything changes. The economy changes. Relationships changes. We change mentally and emotionally and physically. And you are either dying or you are either living. Every time you made a change, you got hurt. And so this is why when you hear the word change, there is a mental block. You cannot change because you have equated change with pain. Every time you have changed, you feel pain. You stepped out of one relationship to another and you feel pain. You leave one neighborhood to another and you feel pain. You go from one job to another and you feel the fire of transition. So every time you hear the word change, you see pain. Every time they say it's time to make a difference, every time they say you need to go from this place to that place, all you can see is blood in your eyes, all you can feel is the blood and trauma in your mouth, hypnotized by the pain of change. Evolve your belief system. Change is not pain. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. See change as necessary. See change as critical. See change as inevitable. And the more and more you start to see that change is not pain, you're gonna see transformation. Your life's gonna experience a quantum leap because now, even though in your childhood, you were traumatized because of change. Your history is not your destiny. See, those of you who will evolve, who are willing to evolve, you will inherit the future. Those of you who are willing to take everything you do to the next level, you will inherit the future. It is the individual who is willing to become more. Change is inevitable. And you are either changing for the worse or changing for the better. You decide. Change is an invitation to the future. If I can change, I can have my future. Another reason why people hate change is because not only do they see change as pain, but all they see change is as failure. And it's because every time you've made a change, you have failed. And you have to start identifying change with a new layer of belief. People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. How do you even do these speeches? It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either go work for it gonna sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. So I see the privilege. I see the moment. I see change as pleasure. I see change as transformation. I see change as evolution. I see change as beauty, brilliance. I see change as the future. I see change as necessary. I see that if I don't change, there is a generation of people who are gonna be stuck in the same place if I don't evolve. See, the marketplace rewards those who have evolved. The marketplace rewards those who have become more valuable. You will be rewarded for the pain. Cry in secret, plead in secret, but in public you'll be rewarded. And if everything you listen to goes over your head, you are going to miss your moment and stay living in the midst of the madness. The madness of impossibility, the lie. Somebody lied to you and told you that it was impossible. 
Every time somebody told me I could not do something, I had a decision that I had to make in order to achieve what they said was impossible. The power is wrapped in the truth and in the power of their perspective. It's wrapped in your capacity, your ability to believe in a dream even if nobody believes in you. Destiny is calling. Your perspective can either become your prison or your passport. It can either arrest you or release you. In 1903, it was the Wright brothers that defied the laws of gravity. And if you know anything about gravity, gravity will pull you down and keep you down. It will stop you from flight. It will stop you in your tracks. If you believe in something, metaphorically speaking, gravity will hold you down, it will hold you back, and it will dare you to fight. Your perspective can either be your prison or your plane. I don't know about you, but today, I made the decision to defy the laws of gravity. The first successful heavier than air powered aircraft was designed and built by the Wright brothers. They flew it four times on December 17, 1903, near Keel Devil Hills, about four miles. I believe possibility is destiny, and it is fear that keeps us arrested and apprehended by the spirit of impossibility. I'm gonna tell you this right now, and nobody else is gonna tell you this. Impossible is a spirit, and you've got to arrest that spirit or it will arrest you. Impossibility is like a soda fountain, the easy way out, the path of least resistance, because to say something is impossible, to give up, to cop out, to fill your cup of carbonated excuses, it tastes good, but it doesn't sit well as it goes down into your system. To remove the two letters is the grit of existence, the binding faith of hope to your chest and letting your heart beat. You gotta rewrite the code, you gotta rewrite the script. Calling all reformers, I'm calling all innovators, I'm calling all game changers, I'm calling all world shakers, I'm calling all city shifters. I'm calling everybody that has an inkling of faith in themselves. I'm calling everybody. You will inherit the future. We gotta rewrite the code in our soul because it's a matter of the soul, it's a matter of the will. People that have a will to win are the ones who, wi who win. These are the people that see the future. These are the people that see not where the hockey puck is, but they see where the hockey puck is going. And that's the type of person that we all need to evolve to become. I, I learned years ago that the difference between people that get things done and people that do not is sheer willpower. Out of all the motivational speeches you have heard, how much of it have you retained and applied to your life? Because understanding the power and the difference between what is impossible and what is possible, it all comes back to your perspective and your capacity. If your why is big enough, then your will will be powerful enough to persevere through the how. You're not looking for resources when you have a will. You become resourceful. And that's the difference between people that see this thing as possible and people that do not. It comes down to one thing, and that is your will. So you don't want it bad enough. You don't want it bad enough. That's why you can't get it done. And so the how intimidates you. And, and, and the what boxes you in. We're more concerned about collaboration than character. I think we need to come back to a place where we're examining ourselves as an individual before a people. We make the people better when we deal with the person. You gotta deal with the person, you gotta deal with you. It's always gonna be impossible to you if you don't see the power of your will.
and the power of your why.